Good day, C3 parents. I'm your host, Karin Pito. Join us on this conversation regarding parenting and adoption. Joining me is Alexa Russell Matthews, a social worker for the Rice family. As non punitive parents, we often go through phases where, like, oh, I don't think my kid is actually going to get past this and I don't know how to handle it. Um, how do I? How do I move forward? And then um, I always say to, to parents when, I, when they go through the courses, they need to understand that non punitive parenting sometimes feel like it takes children longer to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. um, but when they get it, they get it. Yeah. Um, it's, 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 it's as if it, when that penny drops, it's there for life. Um, yeah. What is one of those parenting moments that you've had where you looked at either Batman or your youngest and you went, oh, I wish he would get it. And, oh, he finally got it. And then you realize, okay, I didn't worry. For, I, I worried for no reason. So my children are under six. So I think that's important to say because sometimes they get it and sometimes they don't get it, like all of us. So I just want to roller coaster and I want to preface this with that, is that... In Corona, the time of Corona, I'm sure in everyone's house, we have a lot of very big feelings, very, very big feelings. And so we were coming out of the, the massive big feeling stage of four or five. Um, and then COVID hit. Mm. Very inappropriately timed because I was like, we're finally regulating beautifully. We are finding other ways of managing. Are we there? I see the growth in you, my child. And then, um, and I still see the growth. Like, I don't want to deny the growth because the growth is there. But then these unusual, different grief-inducing circumstances happened. And, and I say grief-inducing because there's been so much loss and so much change of school and friends and freedom and playtime. And regardless of how you think this needs to be managed, that's the experience that we are all having, not just our children. And the one day he looked at me like I was crazy crazy in the head because we've been modeling what to do when we get frustrated and anger so i went and wrestled the couch cushions like a fool you know i looked like a circus clown rolling around saying i'm mad at covid because do 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 and i gave this long list and my son sat looking at me as if to say Have she's lost finally it? lost it like what is wrong with this woman and a little bit later something happened and he was cross like his frustration levels are climbed. Like it was just one of those days where he said, Mom, I'm having a, and my son is articulate. I'm very, very grateful. But from when we were little, we've modeled feelings and how to speak about feelings. And, you know, he's played game with the feeling faces I use for work. He's brought them around and we play charades and we've spoken about what makes us feel this way. And so emotional literacy has been in my house from when, before he could speak, we've been working with that. And, um, and he looked at me and goes, I'm so frustrated. So I said, well, what can we do? And he, the next thing he started punching the couch cushions without any prompting. And then I said, do you want me to stay here? Do you need some space? And he goes, I need some space, but where I can. So I stood down the passage so I could see him and he knew I was there because I always said to him, I'm not scared of your big feelings. Yes. Like sometimes I can't handle my big feelings when you're having big feelings and then I have to walk away, but it's not because I'm scared of your big feelings. Yeah. And so he punched the couch cushions and he did this whole thing. And then we came through a bit later and he looked at me and I said, is that feeling out now? And he was like, no. So then we went and punched the cushions on the bed and we wrestled the cushions on the bed. And then we started playing a game, like a physical game because I'm, hoping that most of your parents have noticed as well. Your kids are a lot more physical, my boy. Um, but that day when I looked at what happened and I looked at his verbal processing, his emotional reflection and his physical choice and behavior, I was like, this has worked. If I had gone in there all guns blazing, which is too easy to do. And I will be honest, I don't get this right 100% of the time. I don't think any of us do, <laughs> depending where we are. Also depends on how we are, but it's about how we repair afterwards that matters. Um, but that day my warm fuzziness kicked in because I was like hmm and you know when we get it wrong and we repair well we're also teaching our children something actually and I can see when that works um, also when he was little he went for swimming lessons and the teacher tried to bribe him and I said to her we don't use sweets as incentives in our house she goes well how do you get him to do stuff I was like because he's got intrinsic he can choose by himself so she wanted him, she goes, if you climb back in the water for 10 minutes, then I'll give you an extra sweet. And he was like, no, thanks. And he climbed out. And there was a part of me, and he was a bit rude. So we spoke about how we speak to people. But there was a part of me that was so proud of him going, I'm not going to do that just because you said I need a sweet. And he was like, no, I'm not going to do that for a sweet. Because he didn't see the purpose of it. And I was really stoked because I was like, this child's got an internal locus of control that's developing. And that's what we want. We don't want 
yes, we are incentivized at work, and yes, we're incentivized to be kind and whatever in different ways. But he was three, and he was like, no. And then afterwards, I said to him, do you think it was kind how you spoke to your teacher? And he went, I said, was that kind the way we spoke? I said, I'm okay that you didn't want to speak. I'm proud of you for saying I don't want to do this, because you're allowed to say that. But did, were we respectful and kind? And as we walked out, he said, I'm sorry, I was disrespectful to you. On his own, I didn't prompt that. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at those two things, I'm like, yeah, something's working, yeah. I've got lots of these kind of stories because now you've taken the little off the box. But I think those are two significant ones. So. Um, it's, it's almost as if it's they're, they're small things that they do to show us that they love us. But it's that mm. moment when that penny drops for them that I, I personally feel my cup runs over. It's, it's like... Yeah that to me is it is almost more of a fulfilling moment in in my parenting journey than you know the flower or the the picture that they draw and it's not that they they their acts of love doesn't mean anything it is just you, you as a parent we often question ourselves like are we doing the right I, thing are we yeah heading in the right I think way? those you know, I said to Charlie once my husband a while ago I said parenting is the one place that you don't have um, performance reviews unless you ask your children for them. Yes. So when those moments happen, that's your performance review. That's where actually you can say, yes, you're getting this, you know, it's always a work in progress because we human beings and our children are always growing and developing and there's always going to be new challenges. But when those moments happen, you know that somewhere along your performance is actually on track as a parent. Yes. yes. Um, I always say, say that a mom, a mom, a mom commented and said, um, her second child, she's really struggling, you know, with, with her second child. And I'm like, but you're a first time mom of a second, of a second child, child at this age, um, because every child is different. And that remembering, no matter how old our kids get, no matter how many kids you have, every time that yeah. you encounter your child, when you're encountering your child and you meet them on their level, you're a first time mom meeting that child in their first time moment. Um, and that has helped me personally to, to try and I had to, to during my parenting journey, had to kind of chuck some things that I grew up with, with what parenting looked like. Um, mm. And then when we're overly emotionally charged, like for instance, in this, this whole Corona COVID um, situation, we're like already hyper vigilant, already hyper, hyper aroused mm. um, in, in how we, we view the world. Um, I always have to remind myself, I'm a first time mom of this five-year-old. I'm a first time mom of the seven-year-old and it is okay. It is okay that we make mistakes. We all, all are learning mm. cons consistently and growing um, and being able to go back and say, Oof, I think I messed up here and it's okay because we feel And modeling. Repair. Yes. Repair well, repair well. That's the words I held in my head is how do I repair well? Yes. And if I say to him, will you please forgive me? And he goes, no, I'm going, well, that's okay that you're not ready yet, but my heart towards you is this, you know? So we don't just say, I'm sorry in my house. We always say, I'm sorry for, and please forgive me when we're ready to. We don't do it in response for a prize because <laughs> that's yeah. not, that's, you know, that's we, a punishment consequence system. Like that's not natural. <laughs> we did um, at a stage with, with, we did work with rewards at a stage with, with our oldest, but that was, there was um, circumstances of um, he's, he's got sensory challenges. So he's, you know, that's a lot of, lot of parents would say, you know, when a child is hungry, they will eat. So you can, you can get them to eat, not, especially no. not with a sensory child. They will starve themselves. No. They will literally starve themselves. Well, the reward to not eat is greater than the reward to eat when you've got stuff going in your mouth that you don't like the feel of. Yes. yes. So, so what we did is we, we I, I made sure that at least, you know, during the day he would, uh, you know, eat little bits of, of random foods. Usually, luckily, healthy foods. He's not a sweet tooth. He's the kind of kid that, you know, the small smarty packs? He will yeah. three and four and then he puts it away and then he's had enough. I don't know where that he gets that, but he doesn't obviously he doesn't get it from me. Um, and <laughs> and um, so we literally we we had to bribe a bit. So he loves the screen time. So for dinner time, I would make a, a proper healthy meal, and as long yeah. as he was eating, he would be able to continue watching TV because that's the only way we could actually get him to take in healthy foods without gagging or without. He could smile. He, he was distracted. Yeah. Yes, he was distracted, so he would continue eating. Um, so, the, but Karine, that's different, though. I think that's. Uh, I think that's also about meeting your children where they're at. You know, absolutely. And that's there's a purpose in that. I think the problem for me 
and as I look at my children, is that I don't want you to be saying I'm sorry so that you can get something. I want you to be saying that's I'm sorry yeah. so that you're restoring relationship. And that's different. Yes. I, no, I absolutely and agree. I absolutely agree. And I think that's the difference. I think that's, and that's where we work with natural consequences and grace. And so, you know, if you've thrown stuff over, then the natural consequence of that is you have to pick it up. Like you threw it over, you need to actually pick it up. But grace comes in when I say, I will help you pick it up because actually that's my job as your mom. Yeah. And that's the kindness mm -hmm. part. Like and I'm not going to sit here waiting for you to pick it up. Yeah. If it was a 16 year old yeah. tipping over the, the toy box, then the 16 year old. Sorry, buddy. He's to see a specialist doctor. Well. <laughs> but it's a four-year-old. Um, I myself no, get overwhelmed at messy spaces. You know, and don't know where to start cleaning up. How much more for exactly a, for a, for a younger kid? Yeah. What's the biggest challenge for you um, during this parenting? In terms of sorry, on my parenting journey. No, no. I want to say what was the biggest challenge in terms of yeah, in as terms a parent, of your, your parenting journey. Um, <laughs> That's a good question. I, I think what was hard for me in the beginning is that everybody has opinions on everything, on everything. And figuring out who to listen to was something that what I did was eventually I had five people who I respected how they parented. So I didn't, even though we met some gentle parenting groups, even within that space, I still only had five voices that I pressed into in the beginning mm -hmm. around different things, whether it was around nutrition, whether it was around sleep, like I had people that I actually leaned into around those specific spaces and asked them for input and then took what worked in our story. And so that was the first thing. I think the other thing was also, I never read a parenting book, not one. <laughs> I think you're better off. <laughs> Because also I figured that, you know, my child doesn't read parenting books. Like he's not going to read, neither of my boys, and they didn't read the same book, even if there was a book. Like they haven't stuck to the same, they're different individuals. And so for me, what was been hard is people in the beginning were like, you should join this, you should join this, you should set this up, you should do this. And I was like, I, and my personality, if you tell me I should do stuff, I'll go, no. Like that's who I am as a person. Like from when I was little. So the moment you start pushing it back at me about I should, then I'm just going to go, no. Even if there's maybe truth in what you're saying, no, because don't tell me what to do. Like, ask me what would be helpful. So, Even in your own head, um, you know that you're supposed to do it. Yeah, but so that, that's been a growth point for me. But I think I read an amazing blog by, uh, it's, obviously this isn't entirely true, but it's called Why African Babies Don't Cry. And it was about, about intuitive parenting, about actually listening to our own voices. And for me, what's been hardest is having to be able to do that and navigate other people's responses in it, not necessarily my children's. And obviously, like, my oldest didn't, was not a great sleeper. So, he, you know, he wasn't linking sleep cycles. But all children who join their families through adoption have got a level of adjustment and change that comes with them. It doesn't matter whether they're three months old, six months old, six years old, there's an adjustment period that's got to happen. And there's a grief process and adjustment. And so it was also helping people understand that my priority is to make much those. And so the way I choose to parent is going to feed that. And if I get that right, the rest will come. And so it was a lot of that kind of stuff where people asking me questions about why is he like this? Why do you still have to do that when he's this old? And I was like, because our family is only two weeks old. And so emotionally, we are starting here, not where you seeing, you know, it was a lot of that kind of stuff. So I think my biggest challenge in my parenting journey is my thinking face when I look that way. It's not my avoidance no, no. face. Is that that while being my children's parent, there's been a part of me that's also had to sometimes educate people around me. Mm. You know, and we have mixed race families, so that comes with its own dynamics as well. Yeah, obviously, which, another challenge. Yeah. So that comes with other challenges. But no, they're not bad challenges. It's not like we can't deal with them, but it's also the pushback around some of that stuff I think has been painful. Mm -hmm. um, when it's come from unexpected quarters, I guess. So, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Uh, Thank you for joining us. We love to hear from you. Please drop us a comment down below. Hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Ring that bell so you get notifications when we upload a new video. And have an absolutely wonderful day. And we look forward to journeying with you.